Namaste Simran. Namaste. How are we doing today? Glory to God for all things. Well, today is the first Sunday of Lent. And today, in a few minutes at the end of the sermon, um, I'm going to be asking the kids to come up to do the procession. Um, there was a time period that icons were thrown out of the church, and then uh, Emperor Michael and his mother, Empress um, Theodora, um, came and brought them back into the church. And so these thousands of years, we've continued to worship. The theme in the um, epistle reading today was about faith. And faith sounds like such an easy topic. But when you investigate faith, it's really something, it's not complicated, it's simple, but it's a lot more than we may really think about. We believe, of course, Holy Scripture tells us that faith is a gift of the Holy Spirit. So just to start with, we believe that you cannot claim credit for being a Christian. You didn't wake up and say, um, I'm to be a Christian. Kind of yes, kind of no. We believe that God is offering that to everybody. But there's synergy. You have to not, because a gift, you can't take a gift, right? A gift means it's something that's given to you. The Holy Spirit is constantly offering everyone the gift of faith. But you have to be open and you have to receive that from the Holy Spirit. So as Christians, we don't believe that we can even claim credit that we're Christians, but that, that, that we received and accepted this gift of faith. So what does faith mean? What does faith mean and how does it play out in our lives? So do you, are we supposed to and called to have faith during um, good times, when we receive blessings and all these things that we like, right? We should have faith that those are from God. Should we also have faith at times in our life when there's things that we're given that we don't like? Yes, absolutely. Our faith is not supposed to be dependent on if we like what God is allowing in our life or if we don't like what God is allowing in our life. This is really important because many times people will say, gee, I don't know what to believe. I don't know if I believe in God. How can God let me be sick? How can God let me be born without an arm? How can God let a child die? If we don't have faith, all the time, then we don't have faith at all. Our faith cannot and must be not be based on a God that we control. Well, I'll believe in you, God, when you do what I want. I'll believe you, God, when you heal me. I'll believe in you, God, when I get something, when I'm rich and I'm famous and all of that. No, then, then we don't even have faith at all. In Hebrews 11:24. It says that um, by faith, Moses refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, rather choosing to be ill-treated with the Jews, the people um, that, from which he was born. That was by faith. The saints, by faith, enforced justice, received promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched raising fires, women received their dead by resurrection, others suffered mocking and scourges, chains and imprisonments. So by faith, some received people they loved back from the grave. Seems like a pretty nice thing to me. But some in faith received scourging, received their skin being peeled off. They needed to stand in faith also. In today's world, we, we are in the minority. In today's world, we are in the minority. Christians are leaving their faith 
because they don't get what they want or they think something should be better and they blame God. Who do we blame for sin? We should blame the evil one and we should blame ourselves. We should blame the devil and we should um, blame our own lack of faith. But if we stand on faith, then we're, you know, we're really never let down. Every now and then I talk to you about self-esteem. And the world says self-esteem is a good thing. The world says, Theodora, you should believe that you're a better seamstress than everybody else. You should believe that you are, you know, better looking, better this, better that. That's supposed to be self-esteem. Well, we don't call that self-esteem. We call it pride, we call it other things. We are supposed to actually, what do we claim credit for it? By our actions, without the Holy Spirit. Now, without the Holy Spirit, what can we claim credit for? Sin. Sin. We believe that when we are divested from God, that we can only claim credit for the bad things we do. Sure, can you do something nice? You can be a moral atheist, but that doesn't mean you're going to heaven. That doesn't mean that you're a Christian. You can do nice things, but typically when they say, when people tell me, well, I'm, I don't believe in God, but I'm moral and nice. It means that they don't even understand what it is that we're striving for as Christians, as historic Christians, not as modern people trying to make God somebody else. Because in orthodoxy, we want to stand on the faith that Christ gave us and the apostles gave us, not on someone 100, 200 years ago. There's a book called The Field by a Russian author, author that's very, very beautiful. And I've shared this with you before, and I think it's hard because he says, if you have true faith and you believe that God either wills or allows what you need. So even the bad stuff, God allows the bad stuff for you. Not because he hates you, not because he's punishing you, but to help you. If you believe that and you have true faith, then this book talks about if on judgment day, because Jesus Christ is both our advocate and our judge, right? Jesus Christ stands both as our defense attorney, sort of, and who will proclaim if we go to heaven or hell. All Christians believe that. That's in scripture as well as tradition. So if Jesus Christ, who is fully man and fully God, turns to me and says, Father Earl, you're going to hell. You're not going to go to heaven. You're going to hell. This very interesting book says, if I have true faith, if I really believe that God loves me and wants the best for me, then when I hear those words, not good and faithful servant, you're going to hell, I should say, not very many, if that's the will of God, because I know God loves me. If God wills that I go to hell, then I should say, God, I know that you are doing what is right for me. And then this spiritual father teaches that if you have that kind of relationship with God, even though you're fallen, even though you make mistakes, you are going to, God will grab you and the angels will grab you and pull you straight to heaven. You and I need trust in God, not just expectations that we're going to get everything we want. We need to trust him and walk in him for every good and every bad thing that comes around the corner for us. And this is a hard teaching. But if you and I have faith, we have to stand on that he is God and what he either wills or allows is best for us.
That doesn't mean that you shouldn't pray for good health. It doesn't mean that you shouldn't pray and petition God for whatever you want for the people you love as well as yourself. But when God moves, you don't even always see the end of where he's going. You and I need to trust him a whole lot more than we have. And he tells um, Nathaniel, after he's talking to him, that truly I say to you, you will see the heavens open and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. If we stand in faith on him, if we believe that God loves us, if, a, if our fathers, our, our earthly fathers, go to the trouble to chastise us sometimes because they love us, not because they hate us, because they want us to learn and draw closer to the family. We have to believe that our God, who is God, is doing what he is doing because he loves us. We already know he wants you in heaven. He wants us all to be with him forever. But we need to come to him too. He doesn't just force us for anything. But he loves us and he loves you. But we need the kind of faith that we're going to need because Lent is a hard time, but life is a hard time out there. If you start to talk about what you believe as Christians, you're going to lose friends. So this is the time that we need to rethink our faith, stand on our faith, which means total commitment to God. Total commitment to God. And then your life will make sense. Instead of self-esteem, having God esteem. Instead of putting value on who you are, put value on who he is, who you are through him. Then this world makes sense. Then you have strength to withstand the crummy stuff that happens. And may God bless you and keep you and help you and me have the kind of faith that we spoke about in the readings today. Um, normally we would enter right back in to the liturgy, but we are going to do the procession for orthodoxy now. If all the children could please come up with their icons, and if you need some icons, we have some also. Come, please come to the front. As truth has been proven, as falsehood has been disproven, as wisdom has been presented, as Christ has rewarded. This is what we believe. This is what we declare. This is what we preach. Christ, our true God, and we honor his saints in words and thoughts and in sacrifices, in churches and in icons. Christ we worship as God and Master, and his saints we honor as servants of the same Lord. And accordingly, we grant them veneration. This is the faith of the apostles. This is the faith of the fathers. This is the faith of the orthodox. This is the faith which has established the universe. Therefore, with brotherly and filial love, we praise these preachers of piety for the glory and honor of their own pious struggle for the faith. And we say, eternal be the memory of the defenders of orthodoxy, pious sovereigns, holy patriarchs, hierarchs, teachers, martyrs, and, con and confessors. <laughs>
life, who is risen from the grave, for by vanquishing death by death, he has given us victory and great mercy. Teach theos, megos, os, orthéos, imos, Until after communion, okay? And please, we will now. 